In this video, we're going to go over properties of multiplication, such as the commutative property of multiplication, the associative property, identity, inverse, and the distributive property. So let's start with the commutative property of multiplication. Here's the formula that goes with that. It's AB is equal to B times A. So what does that mean? When you're multiplying two numbers, the order upon which you multiply it doesn't matter. The value is going to be the same. So let's say that A is 4 and B is 5. 4 times 5 is going to be the same as 5 times 4. It doesn't matter which number you multiply it first. 4 times 5 is 20. 5 times 4 is also 20. 4 times 5, you could think of it this way. Think of adding 4 5 times. Multiplication is repeat addition. 5 times 4 is basically 5 added to itself 4 times. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus another 4, that's 12, plus another 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20. If you add 5 4 times, 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 15, plus 5 20. You get the same result. If we were to multiply 3 and 6, or 6 and 3, it will be the same, 18. So that's the commutative property of multiplication. AB is equal to B times A. Next up, we have the associative property of multiplication. It's somewhat similar to the commutative property of multiplication, but instead of multiplying two numbers, AB, you're multiplying three numbers, ABC. AB times C is equal to A times BC. So let's say A is 3 and B is 4, and C is 5. The order in which we multiply the three numbers won't matter. But using the rules of PEMDAS and order of operations, we're going to multiply by the numbers inside of the parentheses first. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 5 is 20. Now, 12 times 5 is 60. 3 times 20 is also 60. So we still get the same result. So when multiplying three numbers, if we multiply the first two first or the last two first, it will still give us the same result. Now let's move on to the identity property of multiplication. A times 1 is equal to A. So whenever you multiply a number by 1, the value of that number will not change. It will remain the same. It will retain its identity. So if I multiply 5 by 1, the identity will remain. It's going to equal 5. 4 times 1 will still be 4. Negative 3 times 1 will remain negative 3. So there's no change in value whenever you multiply a number by 1. You're going to get that original number again. So that is the identity property of multiplication. Now let's consider the inverse property of multiplication. So the equation that is associated with the inverse property is a times 1 over a is equal to 1 where a cannot be equal to 0. Because if it was, 1 over 0 will be undefined. So we can't have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction. So let's say a is 4. 4 times 1 over 4 is equal to 1. One way to look at this is to see it this way. 4 
is equivalent to 4 over 1 as an improper fraction. And if we multiply that by 1 over 4, whenever you multiply by two fractions, or whenever you're multiplying two fractions, you need to multiply across. 4 times 1 is 4, and 1 times 4 is 4. Now we have 4 over 4, which means 4 divided by 4, and that is equal to 1. So in other words, these numbers will cancel, giving us the top number. 3 times 1 over 3, that's going to be 1. 5, or negative 5, times 1 over negative 5, these will cancel, it will be 1. So that is the inverse property of multiplication. Now, let's go over the distributive property. You're going to use this property a lot in math, in algebra, and even in other forms of math as well. Here's the formula that goes with it. A times B plus C. This is going to be A times B plus A times C. So you distribute A to B and C. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have 5, and let's say B is 3, C is 4. So to get the answer, we're going to multiply 5 by 3, and then 5 times 4. Now, 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. When added, we get the answer 35. Now, we also could do this another way. Instead of distributing the 5 to the 3 and 4, we could simply add 3 plus 4 to get 7. And 5 times 7 is 35. Now, the second method seems a lot faster, but it really depends. Because sometimes this could be a big number, and it might require extra work to multiply these two numbers. If this is a big number, then the first method is more advantageous. If this is a small number, then the second way is more advantageous. So let me give you another example. Let's say that A is equal to 8, and we're going to say B is 9, C is 7. So using the distributive property, we have 8 times 9, and then we have 8 times 7. Now, 8 times 9, that's 72. 8 times 7 is 56. 72 plus 56, if you want to do long division, I mean not long division, but long addition, you could do it this way. 2 plus 6 is 8. 7 plus 5 is 12. So this gives us 128. Now, let's do it the other way. Let's add 9 and 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. Now, do you know what 8 times 16 is? If you don't know it on top of your head, then the first method is going to be a lot faster because you're going to need a calculator or you may have to do long multiplication. 8 times 6 is 48. We're going to write the 8, carry the 4. And then 8 times 1 is 8 plus the 4. That's going to give us 12. So we get the same answer, 128. So this is a case where it's easier to use the distributive property instead of just adding these two numbers and then multiplying. If you get a big number, it's better to break it up into small numbers and then do it that way. So let's try another example. Let's say we want to multiply 16 by 18. Now, we can use a calculator to get the answer. And I'm going to do that. 16 times 18 is 288. So I'm going to put this in the corner somewhere. Now, you can do long multiplication to get 288. Or we could use the distributive property. 
we can break down these two large numbers into small numbers and do it without a calculator or use long multiplication. 16, I'm going to break that into, actually, let's leave it as 16. 18, I'm going to break it up into 10 and 8. 16 times 10 is 160. Whenever you multiply 10 by anything, add a 0 to it. Now, 16 times 8, we already know that this is 128. 160 plus 128, we know that's going to be 288. So that's when the distributive property becomes useful if you want to multiply two large numbers. Another way in which you can do this problem, you can do it like this. 16, we can write that as 10 plus 6. 18, I'm going to leave it as 10 plus 8. So here we need to use the FOIL method. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 8 is 80. 6 times 10 is 60. And then 6 times 8 is 48. So in the first column, that's going to total to 8. For the second column, 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 8. That will give us 18. Carry over the 1. So we get 288. That's another way in which you can get the same answer too.